My New Year's resolution for 2023, stay above ground. Which means if I don't make it, my wife's going to have to spring for a mausoleum. Of course, if I was a better guy, I would go ahead and buy the mausoleum now, pay for it. That way she doesn't have to. But then with my luck, I'd probably live and just waste my money. That would suck. Welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel and I do appreciate you coming in stepping in Joining me. I want to talk about some just a few of the books that I read in 2022 and I'm gonna call this my five best books of 2022. I read 34 34 books Although a couple don't really count Because they're just too short but Goodreads counts them, so I'm counting it myself. Uh, but it's, I really, 32, 32 actual novels, full-size novel-length books. Anyway, I'm not going to tell you what they are. I don't know, just what I do. But I want to talk about five, and I'm going to say it's the five best. The problem is there's some of them that I really, really loved, but I kind of added some rules. I'm not going to put multiple books by an author in here, and I'm not going to put books that are in the middle of a series because I don't know, just didn't feel right. So a couple were disqualified from this list because of that. And I'll go ahead and tell you some of those. Uh, Robert R. McCammon, Matthew Corbett series books. I read a couple in 2022 and I don't want to say put them on the list. I don't know why. It just doesn't feel right. Books in the middle of the series going on this list. So you don't like it. Do it differently on your on your list. But on mine, I, I put those out. Robert McCammon's Matthew Corbett books are phenomenal. I read a couple, and I didn't put them on this list, even though they're better than some of the books on the list. Maybe a couple. Anyway, also, I didn't want to put multiple books from an author. There's, uh, there's one author that probably should have ranked uh, a couple on here. Maybe two authors. That should have ranked a couple on here, but I didn't do it, and I won't even tell you what those are. But to start things off, number five in my top five books that I read in 2022, some of them are old, some of them are new, but this one is from one of my very favorite authors, Joe R. Lansdale, and this book, Moon Lake, is pretty new. 2021, I think, is originally released. In trade hardcover, this is the SST signed limited edition version of it. It is beautiful. It is signed by Joe Lansdale as well as the illustrator for the book. And it's numbered limited to uh, 500 copies. But uh, Moon Lake was a book that really touched me and I love this book. I probably love it more than a lot of people do. But definitely had to put this book on the top five list. I would have felt like I stole something if I didn't. And this book, it starts off a little bit feeling like some of the books like Joe Lansdale's The Bottoms or even a little bit like Robert McCammon's Boy's Life. A little bit. It starts off with Daniel Russell as a youth. I think he was 13 years old. And he's, uh, he's riding a car with his dad. His mom's already gone. His dad can't handle life, and his dad goes to a bridge, drives off the bridge into the lake, into the sweet by and by, killing himself and attempting to kill his son as well. The son survives. The son uh, spends a little bit of time with a local black family. This is East Texas, and it's long, long ago. I can't remember the actual year that it was set, but it was long ago. Anyway, he's grow he spends a little time with a black family there in East Texas and he really develops a strong relationship with a young black girl. Um but they they felt it was inappropriate for him to be living with these black people. So they moved him in with relatives of his far away and that wasn't such a great life. Anyway, uh he's an adult and they find that the lake, the water level in the lake lowers enough, and they find his dad's car. In the back of the car is a corpse, a skeleton, a body. And they call him up saying, we found your mom, and now he's got to go identify the body. 
uh, things go awry, and I won't go any farther into it, but a phenomenal book. I love this book. It is classic Joe Lansdale. So if you've read Joe Lansdale, this is him. I mean, it flows right off the tip of his tongue like the man's telling you a story. And if you haven't read Joe Lansdale, read this book. But before you do, pull up a podcast, a YouTube video, something. Listen to some interviews with Joe R. Lansdale. Listen to that man talk. Listen to his accent, his cadence, the way he tells stories, the similes that he pops out like off the tip of his tongue, and then read a Joe Lansdale book, and you read it in his voice, and it really makes makes it better. So that's a, that's a strong recommendation. I love that book. Love Joe Lansdale. He's got a lot of great ones. The next one is way back in time from 2021. We're going to go way back to 1929, and this is Dashiell Hammond's the Maltese Falcon. And this is uh, from Franklin Library. It's a Franklin mystery. I finally did acquire the actual leather edition of this book, leather boards. I, I got one that was a couple that were fake leather, but this one is the actual leather edition of the book. Very nice book. But I watched this movie probably 20 times. I love the film. Big Humphrey Bogart fan. Big fan of the genre. And uh, I finally talked myself into reading this book. I had already read The Thin Man by Dashiell Hammett, another movie that I love. But I, I've tried to get over my aversion of reading books that I've already watched the movies of. So I've done a lot of that in the last few years. And this was one of them. I finally got to it. And the movie, I must say, they did a phenomenal job of keeping the movie true to the book. So if you've watched the movie, you know the book. There are a, a couple of minor changes that they had to make because of probably the culture at the time, dealing with homosexuality, kind of, and sexuality in general. A couple of things they tweaked just a little bit. But other than that, very faithful to the book. And uh, this is a classic private detective novel. Sam Spade and Miles Archer are partners. They're private detectives. And a lovely lady shows up at their office one day, and she's got her sister has eloped with a scoundrel of a fellow, and she hires him to find her sister. So uh, Miles Archer goes off and ends up getting shot in the process. So now Sam Spade didn't really like his partner that much. Didn't like him that much. In fact, he may have been having an affair <laughs> with his partner's wife, but... It's his partner. So if your partner's killed, you find the killer. That's just what you do. And he explains that. That's just what you do. It's part of the code. Um, in the process, he gets tangled up in trying to find this golden falcon. He refers to it as a dingus. It's a whatever. It's a gold falcon that's covered in a, a coating. And they're trying to find it. People of all over the world have been trying to find it. It's a long story. <clears throat> the travels of this falcon and there's a major financial incentive for him but it's also a tangled web bad people want it the cops are trying to lace him up into killings and things like that so he's having to to duck and dodge a whole lot and still try to come out on top and there's a love interest going on here too so phenomenal book I definitely rate it 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, read it again. I sure do love this book, and I'm glad to be able to get a nice copy. I've actually got a Folio Society copy, which is pretty good too, but to me, this just looks so great. I'm glad to be able to get that one. All right, so number three in my five favorite books that I read in 2022 with all the rules that I put in place is Blake Crouch, Dark Matter. And this is the Sun Tup Editions artist edition of the book. Sun Tup Editions makes phenomenal stuff. The artist edition, believe it or not, is their economy line. So I pre-ordered the numbered edition signed by Blake Crouch, but this is the, the artist edition. It's signed by the artist and limited to a thousand copies, I believe. Typically there are a thousand. I think there's a thousand of these. Anyway, uh, Dark Matter was the first Blake Crouch book I ever read, and I only read it because Suntup Editions was going to be putting it out. So I had to go jump on, buy the book, and read the book, and I was hooked. Boom, right off the bat. 
When I actually read quite a few Blake Crouch books, loved them all, but I have to say this one by a nose, by a hair, is my favorite of the lot, begrudgingly. I kind of, I don't, it's hard to, hard to discount the others, but I, I really love Dark Matter. Dark Matter starts off with this guy, Jason Dessen, who was a, a up and coming physicist, the big time, big brain, all of these uh, big future ahead of him. He was going to win the awards, set the world, change the world, all these kinds of things. But he ended up getting a girl pregnant and he had a choice. They had a choice. Do we terminate the pregnancy and go on with our careers, become some big star in the science field and her uh, in the art field, or do we become parents and unable to commit and dedicate our lives to our endeavors to become a family, to kind of sacrifice all of those hopes, dreams, and aspirations that would take way too much of our time and energy to be able to be a good parent. And they chose to be parents, to be a, a husband and wife, to be a family. And Jason kind of, in, in, back in here somewhere, he feels like he, he failed because he could have been somebody in the world. And now he's just a guy. He's a professor at a college. Meanwhile, a buddy of his that, uh, that wasn't as good as him academically or scientifically is winning all the awards, is getting all of the glory and all that kind of stuff. And Jason feels somewhere in there, glad for his friend, but also a little bit, should have been me. In fact, his friend says so. Should have been you. You're better than me. Uh, so they're at a party at a bar and he's feeling a little bit down and he just wants to go home. So he leaves early. He decides to walk the long way home so he could clear his head before he gets home and not take this bad negative stuff into the house with him. Meanwhile, he meets up with a stranger. The stranger asks him a question, a basic, simple question. Are you happy with your life? What? Blam, he's knocked out. Uh, and when he wakes up, he's in a warehouse, strapped down to a bed, don't know what's going on. He escapes, and he finds now that his wife is no longer his wife. She's an old friend, that his, uh, his kid doesn't exist, that his old friend and his wife are together, and he's a big-time scientist, a big guy now. But that ain't right. That's not his life, and he's got to figure out what's going on, how do I fix it, how do we do this thing? And that's all I'll tell you about that. I might have told you too much. But phenomenal book. Flippin' phenomenal. I love that book. And like I said, this made me a Blake Crouch fan. Made me read about a bunch of Blake Crouch books. Buy a bunch of Blake Crouch books. And yada, yada, yada. Number two on my best books of 2022. Books that I read by one of my very favorite authors. He is now one of my very favorite authors. He hasn't been publishing books very long. That is Philip Fracassi, and the book is A Child Alone with Strangers. It's another one where I read multiple books of his in 2021, and I feel bad about not having more in here, but it's five. I can't have, I mean, that would be one or two authors in the top five. It doesn't work. So I just limit it to one, my favorite of each of each of these authors that I read. And the, my favorite is A Child Alone with Strangers. And it's it's kind of a surprise. I didn't think, well, I read Gothic in 2022. I didn't think I could like this book as much as I like Gothic. But I did. I liked it better. This book is about as good as it gets. And it's uh, it covers so many bases in terms of book types. And uh, there's a young boy, I think he, a uh, young boy, we'll just leave it at that, preteen. Henry is his name. And again, a lot like Moon Lake, his mom is gone. She's died. And his dad can't cope, can't handle. Things have gone rotten for him since the death of his mother. And his, this book made me cry. Not like boo-hooing, but where I had to stop because the tears in my eyes were disrupting my vision of the book. So I couldn't read the words till I got my eyes dried up. This book did that to me multiple times. And it's not really a sad tearjerker. It's just got some touching moments and some tender feelings come up as a father, as a son, stuff like that. Some tender things touched me. Anyway, Henry's dad, I don't know how much I should tell. 
I don't know. I'll, I won't give you some of these details. I don't know what's all explained in here and what's not. But anyway, Henry ends up as an orphan and in a coma. And his uncle and his aunt, great people taking good care of him. Uh, so he wakes up from the coma. He's with them. They've made arrangements through a lawsuit to get a couple million dollars in a trust for him based on what's happened already. Uh, meanwhile, a bad guy <laughs> finds out about the money, decides he's going to put together a crew, kidnap Henry, and try to get that money. Henry's uncle and aunt, along with an FBI agent, are now trying to track down the kidnappers and save Henry and as time tick tock tick tocks the statistics of him surviving become nil uh, but against all odds against all hope they're trying to find Henry and save Henry one thing that I'll mention while Henry's in a coma after the accident that puts him in a coma he develops some special abilities he sees colors around people and he learns how to interpret those colors into their feelings, their thoughts. He can read their minds. Uh, he can do some pretty amazing things. In addition, the kidnappers keep him in this old house way out in the middle of the woods, but there's a creature, <laughs> a special kind of creature, that has also claimed that as its own. Henry and the creature and the bad guys and the FBI agents and his aunt and uncle all have to figure this thing out. But it's phenomenal. It touches on so many different genres. And it's all good. This It jumps from point of view to point of view. And when that happens, I usually don't love it. Because I'll find a point of view that I want to stick with and I want to hear this story through. Usually the main character. I want to see this story through. And when I have to jump, stop, it's like I'm stopping all there and I'm going into somebody else's point of view and their story. I usually don't like that. But in this one, every single one leaves me wanting to get back to it. So as I jump from point of view to point of view, I'm now, okay, yes, let's let's get here. Let's Let's learn this information. Let's see this part of the story. So it's phenomenal, great. And he sticks to finish. One of the themes with all of these books and all of these stories that I'm going to talk about, they stick to finish. They stick it hard. But A Child Alone with Strangers, five stars, ten stars. However you rank it, it's the max, the top, the tippity tip top. Very good book. If Philip Fracassi can do anything like that ever again, he's the man. Because this is a great, great, great book. This would be a book of the decade. If I'm going to make a top five list of the decade, that might be one of them. It's hard to say how many great books are going to come out in the decade. Anyway, number one, my favorite book that I read in 2022 is probably one of my very, uh, of all the books I've ever read, probably top five. It's definitely top five, maybe four, I don't know. Hard to say, maybe three, whatever. Is The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. The Exorcist is old, 1971. It was originally published by William Peter Blatty. Predated the movie, but the movie again, like, uh, uh, like The Maltese Falcon, the movie was pretty doggone faithful to the book. The stuff they cut from the book for the movie pretty much had to be cut because it, to fit it in a two-hour film or however long that film was, they had to narrow it down. So they made a good choice in cutting what they cut. But again, the book, like is so often the case, the book is better. I love the movie. The book is better. This is the signed and limited 40th anniversary edition from The Lonely Road. And it is amazing. Illustrated edition. There's our there's our dust jacket artwork. This one is the numbered edition. I also have a lettered edition, a PC lettered copy, but uh, this is the numbered edition, limited to 374 copies, signed by Philip uh, William Peter Blatty. I got Philip Fracassi on the brain. Signed by William Peter Blatty. Mine's number 173. But I I read this book because it was published by Sun Tup Editions, and I had it on the list and said, I'll get to it when I get to it, and I did. And I read it, and I loved it. 
And the thing I love about this story is the characters and how they interact with each other. The relationships that build, the, the conversations that go on with some of the characters, what really made this book special to me, Father Karras and uh, D Kinderman, the detective Kinderman. Interactions with these characters are what really made the book for me. Not necessarily the exorcism, the demonic possession, or any of that stuff, but it was a lot of characters that I loved. Their interaction, their conversation, I felt like I was there. I felt it, physically felt their environment. I emotionally linked with some of these characters. I felt their pain. I longed to hear their ideas, their thoughts, for them to come out okay. So this book was, uh, for me, again, five stars, 10 out of 10, however you wanna rate it. One of the all-time great books. And uh, 1971, and I'm saying it's probably my top four of all time. It's hard to say, top four, whatever. Who cares? Anyway, I love this book. Phenomenal. And uh, uh, if, I, if I did a books of the century, this would have to be on that top five list. So that's my top five books. I left out a lot of them that I truly love, and I hate that. That's why I hate top whatever. But that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you for your time. Please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if you got any ideas on books that I should have read or whatever I should have put on my list, just let me know. You got the free reign to comment whatever you want. Uh, if you're selling stuff, I probably won't buy it, but I might. I, I buy stuff, so who knows? Comment, whatever. Let me know. I do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope 2023 treats you well. Here's what I'm expecting in 2023. Expect the worst. That way you're never disappointed, right? Thank you. Say la vie. Baby. Doo-doo.